we need to find all prime numbers p and q that satisfy the equation p cubed minus q to the seventh equals p minus q. This is a problem in Diophantine analysis, specifically concerning prime solutions. A standard strategy for equations of this form is to isolate variables. We will group all terms involving p on one side and all terms involving q on the other to better analyze the equation structure. This rearrangement yields p cubed minus p equals q to the seventh minus q. The equation now has a symmetrical structure, which is a key property to exploit. First, let's consider the trivial case where p is equal to q. If p equals q, we substitute p for q. The minus p terms on both sides cancel. This leaves p cubed equals p to the seventh. Because p is a prime number and therefore non-zero, we can divide both sides by p cubed. This implies that p to the fourth power equals 1. The only positive integer solution is p equals 1, which is not a prime number. Consequently, the case p equals q yields no prime solutions. Given that p and q are not equal, one must be strictly greater than the other. We will analyze the functions on each side of the equation to determine the relationship between p and q. To analyze this, we can model each side of the equation as a separate function. Let's define a function f of x for the left side and a function g of x for the right side. Let f of x equal x cubed minus x. Its derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared minus 1, which is positive for x greater than or equal to 1. Thus, f of x is strictly increasing for all primes. Let us first assume that p is less than q and examine the consequences. Since the function f of x is increasing, the condition p is less than q implies that p cubed minus p is strictly less than q cubed minus q. Additionally, for any prime q greater than or equal to 2, q to the seventh is greater than q cubed. This means q cubed minus q is strictly less than q to the seventh minus q. Combining these inequalities, we find that p cubed minus p is strictly less than q to the seventh minus q. This result contradicts our initial equation, which states that these two expressions are equal. Therefore, our initial assumption that p is less than q must be false. We have now eliminated the possibilities of p equals q and p is less than q. The only remaining possibility is that p must be strictly greater than q. This is a critical constraint. This graph illustrates the reasoning. The function y equals x to the seventh minus x, shown in blue, grows at a much faster rate than y equals x cubed minus x, shown in red. For the function values to be equal, the input to the slower growing function, p, must be greater than the input to the faster growing function, q. We now search for solutions under the constraint that p is greater than q. We begin by testing the smallest prime value for q. If q equals 2, the equation becomes p cubed minus p equals 126. Using two attic valuation, the valuation of q to the seventh minus q is 1. For any odd prime p, the two attic valuation of p cubed minus p is at least 2. This contradiction shows q equals 2 has no solutions. Alternatively, testing integer values. 5 cubed minus 5 is 120. 6 cubed minus 6 is 210. Since the function is strictly increasing, there is no integer solution for p. Next, we test q equals 3. The right side of the equation evaluates to 2184. The value of p cubed must be close to 2184. We can estimate that 13 cubed, which is 2197, is a promising candidate. Let us test p equals 13. The calculation confirms the equality. Since 13 and 3 are both prime, and 13 is greater than 3, the pair p equals 13, q equals 3 is a valid solution. The pair p equals 13. 
Q equals 3 is a solution. However, finding one solution by inspection is not a proof of uniqueness. A systematic method is required to determine if other solutions exist. To prove uniqueness, we will employ modular arithmetic. The key insight comes from analyzing the equation modulo Q. We return to the rearranged form of the equation. The expression on the right, Q to the seventh minus Q, is divisible by Q. The Q attic valuation is 1, since Q to the sixth minus 1 is not divisible by Q. Therefore, the left side must have the same Q attic valuation. This implies the left side must also be congruent to 0 modulo Q. Thus, EP cubed minus P is congruent to 0 modulo Q. Factoring the left side yields P times P minus 1 times P plus 1. Since Q is prime, if it divides this product, it must divide at least one of the factors. This presents three cases. Q divides P, Q divides P minus 1, or Q divides P plus 1. As P and Q are distinct primes, Q cannot divide P. This leaves two remaining possibilities. This implies that P must be of the form K times Q plus or minus 1 for some integer K. This is a strong constraint on the relationship between P and EQ. We will now analyze the first case. P equals K times Q plus 1. We substitute this expression for P into the equation. The substitution results in this equation relating K and Q. To proceed, we must expand the terms on the left side to form a polynomial in K and Q. First, the cubic term is expanded. Next, we distribute the negative sign across the second term. Now we combine like terms. The terms containing k times q are combined, and the constant terms cancel. The simplified expression is shown here. We observe that every term in the equation is divisible by q. Dividing the entire equation by q yields this polynomial in k and q. We will again use modular arithmetic to analyze this relationship. Considering this equation modulo q, any term containing a factor of q will be congruent to zero. The equation simplifies significantly. We find that 2 times k is congruent to negative 1, modulo q. This congruence implies that 2 times k plus 1 must be a multiple of q. This provides a direct relationship between k and q. Let's test this new constraint. We will verify this constraint using our known solution where p is 13 and q is 3, which corresponds to the case p equals k times q plus 1. To find the value of k for this solution, we first isolate the term containing k by subtracting one from both sides. The left side evaluates to 12. To solve for k, we now divide both sides by 3. 12 divided by 3 equals 4. Therefore, for this particular solution, the integer k must be 4. We now substitute k equals 4 into our derived constraint 2 times k plus 1. This gives 2 times 4 plus 1, which equals 9. 9 is indeed a multiple of q, which is 3. Thus, the constraint holds for our solution. Now we will prove that no prime q greater than or equal to 5 can give a solution, which completes our uniqueness proof. From our equation, p cubed minus p equals q to the seventh minus uq. Since ep and eq are different primes, p must divide our q to the sixth minus 1. We can factor q to the sixth minus 1 into these four terms. Any prime divisor of this expression must divide one of these factors. The largest of these factors is q squared plus q plus 1, so any prime divisor of q to the sixth minus 1 must be less than or equal to this value. Since ep divides aq to the sixth minus 1, we must have p is less than or equal to q squared plus q plus 1. This gives us an upper bound for p. From our original equation, p cubed minus p equals q to the seventh minus q. 
we can deduce that p cubed is greater than q to the seventh minus eq, since p is positive. Now we will prove a crucial inequality. q to the seventh minus q is greater than the quantity q squared plus q plus one cubed when q is at least five. Expanding the cube of q squared plus q plus one gives us this polynomial. Subtracting this expansion from q to the seventh minus q yields this expression. Factoring and grouping terms, we can rewrite this as q to the fifth times the quantity q squared minus q minus three minus the remaining lower order terms. For q greater than or equal to five, we can establish that q squared minus q minus three is at least 17 and the sum of the lower order terms is at most 24 times q to the fourth. Therefore, the difference is at least q to the fifth times 17 minus 24 times q to the fourth, which equals q to the fourth times the quantity 17q minus 24. For q greater than or equal to five, this is strictly positive. This means p cubed is greater than the quantity q squared plus q plus one, cubed, which implies p is greater than q squared plus q plus 1. This contradicts our earlier upper bound for p. Therefore, no prime q greater than or equal to 5 can give a solution. A similar analysis for the case p equals k times q minus 1 can be performed, and it also yields no prime solutions. In conclusion, we have demonstrated that this equation has only one solution in prime numbers. The unique prime solution is p equals 13 and q equals 3. Thank you for joining us for this problem. If you found this analysis interesting, please consider subscribing for more content.